Okay, okay, now we're talking. What up, fellow music geniuses? My name is Joel from Rooney Official, also a music genius. And today we're gonna be looking at songs that may sound exactly the same. I've had one of my editors put together a compilation of songs that people say sound the same. We're gonna actually explore this in this video. I'm gonna put it into my music program. We're gonna play them next to each other. We're gonna analyze everything and see, are they copies? Let's get started. Remember to watch the video till the end so you don't miss any of these crazy copies. Okay, so first off, we have Bruno Mars's Treasure versus Breakbot Baby I'm Yours. Let's have a listen. It's a bot. That is pretty close, I gotta say. Wow. At first I was like a little bit like, ah, it's just kind of 70s vibe. But then like the rhythmization and then kind of like how the chorus ended felt very similar. It seems very inspired, honestly. And the way the beat goes away in the end there as well, very interesting. Okay, let, let's get him into the music program and analyze what's similar and if it's similar enough for it to be an issue. Okay, so I put him in the same key, same tempo. I'm gonna put him one in the left side of your speaker and one in the right. Let's see how similar it sounds. Oh my God. Okay, so they kind of do the same ending of the choruses as well, but to break this down, the chords are different. I would say that it's in the melodies where it really, really stands out as similar, but Bruno Mars' song starts on these chords. While the other one starts here. Chord structure wise, not super close, even though that also lives in the same ballpark of things, but the melodies. Dude, the melodies. And they do the same little thing on the third phrase as well, where they go up in the melody on the last note. <laughs> but the Breakbot song has a structure that ends earlier. So it stops on an 11 chord right here. While that chord comes a lot later in the Bruno Mars song, even though it does come. But overall, the melodies are just very close and kind of the vibes and everything, it's very much too close for comfort. Let's see if they actually credited them or if this is one of those where I'm gonna get very mad. Due to the similarities shared with Breakbot's Baby I'm Yours, new writing credits were added. Okay, so they didn't have it from the beginning. They thought they could get away with it. That's pretty crazy. I mean, there are clear differences, but also those melodies, man, it's pretty much the exact same melodies, even though the chords are different. Uh, <laughs> Breakbot calls out Bruno Mars. Hey, at Bruno Mars, seriously. <laughs> <coughs> so it seems like Bruno doesn't really talk about it. However, Breakbot is using it for promo, of course, which totally makes sense. And I think that's okay. I wonder if they were aware. It's always fascinating. Breakbot says, we also come from the sample generation. So it's kind of ridiculous for us to sample so many artists from the past and then get mad when somebody takes a statement from one of your songs. Yeah, but also you, you did get the songwriting credit in the end. So good for you. Okay, next. One Direction, Midnight Memories versus Def Leppard, Pour Some Sugar On Me. Let's have a listen. Oh. It sounds like that old song. Is it that one? Again, we got the most basic chords in existence and the most basic rhythm in existence going on here. So we got... <laughs> if you could copyright that, that would be like all music's copyrighted now. There's nothing left. I would say the little guitar thing in the middle made me think more of that other song. What's that called? Steve Miller Band. People talk about me, baby. 
just that I'm reminded of another song just means again how generic the whole thing is. But they do that thing here. I would say the instrumentals of these songs, like they sound really good, but the riffs are generic and what's really in focus in these songs and in most songs, let's be real, is the melodies that they're singing. And they're not really taken from any of these songs at least. By the way, please subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on notifications. I make music related content every day. Okay, let's have a look at this as well. See if anyone said that this was exactly the same song. Did anyone go after them in court? Let's have a look. Ooh, in 2013, Def Leppard had asked their lawyers to look into allegations that Midnight Memories and Pour Some Sugar On Me bear striking similarities. But then Def Leppard confirmed that they were not pursuing legal action. Campbell said, the chords are 145, those are the blues. You don't get more basic than that. Yes, he gets it. A musician that gets it. But then he says something. I think what's more reminiscent of the Leopard thing is the production, the sound, the vocals, the reverb, and the way it's assembled. Let's have a listen to that. Actually, I can see that kind of the sound. I mean, yeah, it is pretty close. They would totally have lost the lawsuits, but it is there kind of like in the middle ground of like, how far can you go with everything? You know, when it's like just the drums, the guitar riff, kind of the melody. It's an interesting question to ask yourself. I, I would have wanted the songwriters of the One Direction song to be a little bit further away, honestly. It's just a lot of music that sounded like that back then. Okay, next, I don't care about this anymore. David Guetta, When Love Takes Over versus Coldplay Clocks. Oh, which song? This sounds like Clocks. It's complicated. Oh, this song is good. I love it. That's just the way it goes. Okay, let's get those into the music program. This one's interesting. I want to get them in the right key to really dissect what it's like. It is a riff though. It's hard to for me to think that a riff can be really stolen. It can for sure. Like if I wrote a song tomorrow that's like blah 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 in the bass. Of course, that would not be okay and I would have to pay royalties, but you know, maybe it's not as much about how similar it is, but also like if something really is a song that everyone knows and more people will like a song I make or like because I steal something from someone else just because of you know how that first song paved the way then i think they should have royalties more than you know not even that riff like blah 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 like if they hadn't come up with it i sure someone else would have but now they have and you know i think they deserve credit for that and money since like a big part of why people would really like that riff now is because they've heard it before okay so here we have them in the same key and i didn't realize listening to it at first but they're different in version right i don't want to get too technical but basically it's the difference between and this. It's the same chord, but it's higher on the keyboard, pretty much. That's a very simplified way of saying it. Let's play them one in each ear. Yeah. Definitely inspired, a little bit modified. David Guetta does a change here that Clocks doesn't do. Those two don't line up. And then we have here. Yeah, it's not the same there either. He kind of does the change that happens in the last part here. He does here. So I could match them up if I copy that there and just do a copy of this, I think. Yeah. So then it would be exactly the same, but it's not like that. Well, not exactly, but very close. But now it is different. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I think it's okay. It's just a riff. It's not like a bunch of words that are stolen. It's not a melody per se that's stolen. I don't call this a melody. It's just an arpeggio. Basic, basic arpeggio. Okay, let's see if anyone tried to sue anyone. Seems like critics pointed out that it was similar to Clocks, but they liked it. And I would agree. God, I had forgotten about that song. I'm gonna add that to my playlist later. There's always that one guy though. So Michael Wood of the Los Angeles Times was less impressed than other critics, simply noting the song as a cheesy synth pop makeover of Coldplay's Clocks. That's, That's just you trying to sound smart. smart. Nothing else about the song is that similar. Oh my God. Music journalists. Let's pop in. Okay, next. Tim McCraw and Faith Hill, The Rest of Your Life versus Jasmine Ray, When I Found You. Never heard any of these songs before. This will be super interesting. <laughs> hey, don't drive that nice car out in the grass. It'll get ruined. It's 
Sitting with you in a dark room. Wait, did it change song? Today I held flowers. Huh. And I dressed in white. Wait, this is like the same song. What's going on? Hmm. That was I, I need to hear those piano riffs again and those verses. These are extremely similar, right? And I dressed in white. Okay, okay, now we're talking. <laughs> I gotta say again, that, that piano riff, while extremely similar, it seems like something pretty much any pianist would just kind of play. I don't know, it's just something you play on piano. It can't really be like, oh yeah, that's my... <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, this is mine. No one else is allowed to play this anymore. <laughs> I need to listen to these verses properly, figure out how similar they are because that's seemed too close. It seems both these songs are like designed for the wedding waltz, right? They're both in like the waltz six, eight. One, two, three, one, two, three. It's just like for you to dance to on your wedding day. Okay, so I can't really sync these up properly because I think that one of the songs is not recorded to a click track, which makes my life miserable. Everyone at home, record your songs to click track. Otherwise, I can't check if you copied someone later. Okay. <laughs> the melodies start at different places, so they're not the exact same, but it's kind of like he's echoing her melody. Today I brought flowers. And then he's like, sitting with you in the dark room. The, dark room. the same melodies, but at different parts, timing wise to the beats. Just not exactly the same. Also, again, very, very basic. Tell me in the comments if I'm wrong. Anyway, let's see if these people ended up suing each other. Oh, God. So Ed Sheeran was involved in writing this. He wrote it together with Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. They settled it. So basically, they paid her off. I'm surprised. I just thought the songs were kind of not very interesting, but apparently, in the eye of the law, they were too similar. That's interesting. Seems like Ed Sheeran has a lot of lawsuits against him. I guess he writes, to some extent, generic songs sometimes. At least, like, classic classic sounding songs, so I can see it happening. Okay guys, click here for more music commentary videos, click here for videos where I make music or perform myself. I will see you in tomorrow's daily music themed video.